Art is the reshaping of reality by man to present it in an understandable way. As the artist recreates the world around him, it is shaped by how he sees it and what he believes in. The Indian artist did not attempt to depict only the material reality around him. He wished to share the complete experience of the moment, not just the photographic presentation of the shapes around him. Beauty for the Indian artist has been a reflection of the glory of God. In fact, for the ancient artist, the experience of beauty, the ecstasy on seeing nature or art which is truly beautiful, has been considered as akin to Brahmanand or the final bliss. Join us on this journey into the heart of the Indian tradition of painting. Come with us to the gorge of the Vaghora River, where Ajanta was created, to the courts of the Mughals and the Deccani Sultans. Journey with us through the deserts of Rajasthan and the icy lands of Ladakh and Lahore Spiti, in the verdant south and in the gentle hills of the north. Experience the compassionate view of life that is enshrined in Indian painting. In the 14th century, one of the greatest Hindu empires of all time was founded, the Vijayanagar Empire. Vijayanagar meaning the city of victory. This was a culturally proud empire and it prospered through trade with other lands. For two centuries, the empire of the city of victory nourished art and culture and dominated center stage in South India. The capital city of Vijayanagar was founded in 1336 AD on the banks of the Tungabhadra River. Harihar and Bukha, along with their spiritual mentor, chose a site sanctified as a holy place for the capital of their new kingdom. During the reign of subsequent kings, by the mid-15th century, the kingdom stretched from North Karnataka to Kerala and from the Malabar coast to Orissa. The Vijayanagar Empire was founded for the propagation of dharm and Hindu ideals. It revived some of the finest traditions of Hindu thought. The concept of dharma, one's duty to life, to oneself and to society, came to center stage in public life once again. The king thought of himself as a patriarch, with many responsibilities and duties towards his people. The people in turn looked up to him, respected and even revered him. There is a deep sense of equality and democracy in ancient Indian thought. Each man has a place in society and a sense of dignity in that place. In reviving the pride and confidence of society, the empire of the city of victory also revived the enthusiasm and traditions of the artists. After many years, we see the revival of prolific mural paintings, the chief of all arts, as stated in the ancient Indian treatise, the Chitra Sutra of the Vishnu Dharmutra. From the 14th to the 16th centuries, the capital city of Vijayanagar was one of the most prosperous cities in the world. 
people from distant countries rubbed shoulders with each other in the marketplaces here. Portuguese merchants brought the best horses from Arabia. Diamonds came here from Golconda and textiles and spices flowed here from all corners of the world. This was one of the most thriving and cosmopolitan places in the medieval world. Trade and commerce brings the people of different lands together in a spirit of cooperation. Naturally, this leads to mutual understanding and appreciation. The exchange of ideas in prosperous trading centers leads to the development of rich and vibrant cultures. People take from each other the best of what each has to give and this usually results in the most beautiful flowers of thought and art. So it was in Vijayanagar. Under the enlightened rule of Krishna Devraya, the empire rose to its zenith and drew appreciation from travelers from all over the world. A Portuguese traveler, Barbosa, wrote, the king allows such freedom that every man may come and go and live according to his own creed without suffering any annoyance and without inquiring whether he is a Christian, Jew, Moor or heathen. Great equity and justice is observed to all, not only by the ruler but by the people to one another. The mighty Vijayanagar Empire served as a bulwark of ancient Indian culture. It drew a line across the Deccan and prevented the invasion of armies from the north. The Vijayanagar style of architecture, sculpture and painting was created. It fused elements of earlier Hindu art with rich influences from other cultures. The ceiling of the Virupaksh temple at Hampi is covered with paintings of the 15th century. The paintings at Hampi exhibit vigour. There is a sense of purpose and belief which is seen in these paintings. As in the paintings of the past, the themes are mainly religious. There is a deep intertwining of the story of the Vijayanagar Empire and its kings with the stories of the gods they believed in. Along with epic themes, we see the procession of the revered sage Vidyaranya, who was the spiritual mentor of the founders of the Vijayanagar Empire. This painting shows Lord Ram bending the mighty bow of Shiv to win the hand of Sita in marriage. And here, we see the scene of the marriage. Arjun aims his arrow at the eye of the fish to prove his skill and to win the hand of Draupadi in marriage. This is a scene from the epic Mahabharat. Dee 
Traits of valor and skill were obviously held in high esteem in this society. A combination of bold action and deep religious belief are seen as prime impulses in the building of Vijayanagar. There is simplicity and vigor in the style of the paintings. There is a sense of movement and energy which is caught in the painted figures. The temple at Lipakshi was made in the 16th century by the Nayak brothers, Virupanna and Viranna, at a center of trade and pilgrimage in the Vijayanagar Empire. The paintings on the ceiling of the Mandap here are some of the finest mural paintings of the medieval period in India. Lipakshi presents the richness and color of a great cosmopolitan society. It presents one of the great moments in Indian painting. The painter here has a highly developed skill and also the vitality and grace which come from deep personal conviction and religious belief. There is a sense of liveliness here, which is enhanced by the depiction of the protruding eye. In profiles, we see the further eye shown beyond the line of the face. A sense of liveliness is also conveyed by angular features and by the peaked corners of clothes. We see these conventions spanning the course of many centuries across the entire Indian subcontinent. The paintings on the ceiling are arranged in broad bands. They chiefly illustrate themes of Lord Shiv. There is also a painting showing Viranna and Virupanna along with their retinue. What connects Indian paintings from Ajanta through Elora and the paintings of Alchi to those here in Lipakshi is the view of life which they express. The focus is always on the soul within and the beings are seen with a sense of humility. There is a very cosmopolitan sense in all the great paintings of the Indian tradition. This is seen in the rich variety of textiles and ornamentation and also in the continually evolving styles of painting. The human figures remain idealized as, after all, the whole universe is seen to be a reflection of the beauty of the Lord. These paintings are a valuable visual record of the lifestyle of one of the greatest and most cosmopolitan centers of the medieval world. The crowns and the textiles exhibit the fashion of those times. Here, we see some of the last flickering of the great tradition of mural painting coming from ancient times. With the breezes of many lands which blew in cosmopolitan Vijayanagar, the paintings here acquired a grace and elegance which is distinctly Vijayanagar. With the expansion of the Vijayanagar Empire, this delightful style of art spread all over South India 
and its echoes can be found in Indian paintings till today. In the temple of Vardaraj in Kanchipuram, the ceiling has some surviving paintings of the 17th century. We see here themes of Rati and Manmata, the god of love. These are amongst the last paintings of the Vijayanagar kingdom in Tamil Nadu. The glorious themes of the earlier Vijayanagar murals are now replaced by subjects such as animals composed of human beings. The Vijayanagar Empire expanded southwards to include Kerala. Mural painting was revived here and continued as a vital and unbroken tradition right up to the 19th century. The Mattancheri Palace was built by the Portuguese in 1555 and presented to the ruler of Kochi. Legends associated with Shiv and Parvati, Krishna and Ram were painted here on the walls in the 18th century. In the words of the late Stella Kramrish, a great scholar of Indian art, classical Indian painting had shown God in a world enchanted by his presence. On the walls of the temples and palaces of Kerala, the gods are seen complete in themselves, symbolizing, as it were, the fact that everything is within the divine, and the divine is all there is. There is a new sense of power and majesty which we see in the painted gods of Kerala. Truly, each figure is larger than life. Their limbs are strong and their bodies are full and firm. These are gods in their paternal and maternal forms. Protective, proud and vigorous. There is a new sense of beauty of form that we see here. The manner of shading to depict volume reminds us of Ajanta and Alchi. While those at Ajanta were lighter, more airy beings, these here are gods upon the earth, providing us immediate comfort with their presence. A presence painted with a sense of tangible volume, which expands to occupy the space of the paintings and reaches out into our world. The wall paintings of the 18th century in the Padmanabhapuram Palace near Tiruvananthapuram are another treasure of the art of India. We see here paintings depicting the vast pantheon of Hindu gods. The idiom of Kerala is unique. Its close relationship to the ancient dance dramas of the land gives it a form which is dramatic and yet convincing and subtle. We see here, as in the dance dramas of Kerala, elaborate headgear and heavy forms. It is a sense of reordered reality, where the drama of everyday life appears to be left behind. For on this stage, 
there is the drama of the gods and a greater reality. The temples of Kerala present a deeply sanctified environment where ancient traditions still continue. Here, in the Vaddakanath temple, around which the city of Thrissur is built, we see some of the finest paintings continuing the ancient Indian tradition. There is a tangible and supple quality in the figures, which is directly in keeping with the finest of Indian painting. We are reminded of Ajanta and Sittanavasal. In the late 17th century, South India was torn by political strife. The Vijayanagar Empire, which at the height of its glory had been the bulwark against foreign invasions, had by now disintegrated. Small independent kingdoms, each constantly at war with the other, now dotted the landscape of South India. The Nayaks ruled in Tamil Nadu after the decline of the Vijayanagar Empire. In the great temple of Brahdishwar at Tanjavur, the Chola paintings of the 10th century were covered with plaster and new paintings were made. The Nayak period retained the traditions which had begun in Elora and continued through the Vijayanagar period. The ceiling of the Chidambaram temple also presents some of the finest surviving paintings of the Nayak period. There are many excellent paintings here on the theme of Lord Shiv. They retain the lively sense of the early paintings of Vijayanagar. Living in a traditional Indian society, people were expected to have imbibed a basic knowledge of their eternal themes. Here, in the late 17th century, in the Nayak period, we see a shift in the traditions. For once, words appear to be found necessary by the artist. The indigenous idiom of painting had risen again to glorious heights under the Vijayanagar Empire. The very factors that contributed to its rise also hastened its downfall. The legendary wealth of South India and especially the Vijayanagar Empire lured foreign invaders. By the mid-17th century, the Dutch, French, and the British had all established themselves firmly in Indian soil. The intense sense of pride that the king and his people felt right up to the 17th century had found reflections in the art of those times.
Now, Dutch and British influences changed the course of painting in South India. European ideas were not absorbed easily, but were juxtaposed uncomfortably with the indigenous idiom. The 18th century painting under the Marathas shows the changed creative landscape in India. Motifs borrowed directly from foreign sources exist alongside Indian deities and themes. New styles of painting which now emerged catered to the new tastes of patrons. The paintings of Vijayanagar and those of Kerala were glorious moments in the art of India. The painter was sure of himself and had a vision which was uniquely his own. He continued the knowledge of his ancestors and reinterpreted the eternal thoughts. The strength of his humility is seen in this last great phase of Indian mural paintings. Nirunad 